This is a science. It is not a religion. It is a process. When you teach people how to analyze, how to think things through, how to weigh evidence, you are not teaching them dogma. You are teaching them how to make decisions on their own. Um, How something which does not encapsulate and center itself on ritual for the sake of ritual can be considered a religion, I don't know. Um, We're talking about... I, I wonder why people who are so opposed to evolution being taught in schools don't have a problem with metallurgy. Uh, why they don't have a problem with uh, higher math, why they don't have a problem with optics, uh, why they don't have a problem with chemistry, because these are all the same species of science. Uh, They all come under the heading of science. And they don't have a problem with these things, but then we come to evolution. What is the only difference between all those other things? Even astronomy doesn't really quibble bother too many of them. There were some that think astronomy is probably a false thing because it suggests that the universe is much older than it really is. But by and large, you have a much broader uh, spectrum of, of people who are uncomfortable with evolution as opposed to anything else. You have people who have no problem with an 18 billion year old universe who don't like evolution. Um, I will let them come in and teach evolution as a process, as a part of science, because because it's science. And if it proves to be wrong, then that is instructive as well. Um, but it is not a religion. It is, it is in no way a religion. The, the difference between evolution and all the other ones is it speaks directly to origins for the human species. And that's, that's a, a room that nobody wants to go into. Um, William Jennings Bryant summed it up way back at uh, the Scopes Monkey Trial. Uh, he said that we can allow for evolution that is about animals and plants and all the other aspects of the biosphere. He didn't say biosphere, but that's what he meant. As long as it says nothing about people, humans. Because he thought including human beings into that made them animals, and if we are animals, then we have no basis for morality. Which is an argument I find incredible since morality happens regardless of religious persuasion. Morality happens whether you are a believer in 20 gods or one. Morality has similar features, not the same, not exactly the same, but similar features across all cultural lines. It doesn't matter who you worship, what book you read this out of. It's a human thing that has developed over time. And maybe we ought to start teaching morality in school. We don't because we're afraid of the religious connection, and this is the other side of the absurdity of this whole argument, we don't teach religion in public school. Why not? Well, because we have this separation thing. Why don't you teach it in history? It astonishes me that anybody thinks that they can teach history without any reference to religion. I mean, a good reference. How do you teach about the Crusades without talking about religion? and what people believed, and and the nature of those beliefs. How do you talk about the Enlightenment? How do you talk about what Henry VIII did without getting into religion? The politics of religion, but nevertheless, you have to talk about this. I, I have never understood that. I know I got taught all of these subjects when I was in high school, and there was almost no mention of religion. And I, I to this day, I don't know how that worked. I suppose I could go back and read those books and see what they did. Can you teach science without talking about the obstacles religion has put in the way of science? No, uh, in a science class. Sure you can, but you can't teach the history of science without it. You can teach science as a set of processes and be completely and 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 ignore the history. Um but as a separate subject, the history of science, you really don't even need to know much about science in order to see, study the history of science. Uh, this is part and parcel of the history class. 
And I suppose this is a good argument for why subjects shouldn't be so arbitrarily separated as they are in school. Uh, if in order to teach science, for the most part, you're going to have to teach math. How come we don't teach math and science in the same class? In order to teach the history of science, you have to teach history. Uh, why aren't they all just... Why don't we have a three-hour class that goes from history to math and with everything in between? But, you know, presumably somebody understands why they do these things to kids. Because the fact is that religion has been our single largest conduit for moral teaching, regardless of the culture. Um, Although you could make the argument that the Greeks didn't do it that way, because they didn't think that the gods had anything at all to do with morality. The gods were arbitrary creatures of of, uh, unparalleled power who, for their own purposes, would fiddle with your life for no good for no reason that you could ever understand. Morality had to come out of something else, and hence we have the whole, all of the philosophical schools. So probably there you would find an argument that you can teach morality without reference to the gods. Depends on the nature of it. But nevertheless, since uh, the modern era, religion has been the chief tool for the transmission of moral code. Um, but there's a small anecdote that uh, I'll talk about and one of one of the little lessons that I used to get from my father his my father was would assert that people do things because they're afraid of punishment that we stop at a red light because we're afraid if we go through it somebody will come through the green light the other direction and kill us it is fear that constrains us from running the red light and my own experience has denies that completely. I don't stop at the red light because I'm afraid of getting hit. I mean, I can look and see if anything's coming. There are many times that I've sat at a red light and there has been no traffic whatsoever. And I've sat at the red light because it's courteous, because it's community rule. It's the law. It is something that I do because in doing so, I make myself part of that community in the best way possible. It's a choice that I make, ultimately, to behave according to those things which support the best attributes of my community. Fear's got nothing to do with it. Um, Now, that's a very small and almost insignificant example. I mean, it's almost silly. But you can argue from that to the greater to say, why do we do anything that we do? Is it really, do we actually not vote for something because we're thinking about what God thinks of it or because we just simply find that it's insupportable for other reasons? Um, In the mean of, of something like that, do we clean our front lawn of leaves and and another detritus because we're afraid of getting fined? Do we take care of our property because we're fearful of getting cited by our neighbors and turned in? No, we do this because this is part and parcel of what it means to be part of this community. Um, And it's a choice. Um, Most people want to be law-abiding citizens. Um... Which is one of the reasons why I find the, many of the arguments of libertarians completely without ground, that, that people are not anarchic creatures who will do things for their own impulses uh, without consideration of others, that the, the spirit of generosity or altruism is just this, this thing that's been imposed, bullshit, nonsense.